Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today we're going to talk about four ways to invest in real estate with your RSPs or TFSA. This is such a hot topic within the investing community and I can understand why. Gone are the days of using your RSPs to invest in mutual funds through a financial advisor who stands to make more on your money than you do. Savvy investors are becoming wise to the alternative methods that we can use our registered funds to invest in. There are so many myths around investing with registered funds and there's good reason for that. Our financial institutions in Canada are not great about educating Canadians about their options. Okay, let me rephrase that. They suck at educating Canadians about our options. Why is that? Because they don't offer self-directed registered accounts that allow you to invest in the highest yield opportunities. So when you ask, can I invest my RSPs into real estate? They'll generally say no. What they should be saying is no, you can't do that with us, but you can do it through another financial institution and therein lies the problem. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how you can put your registered funds in a position where you can truly choose what kind of opportunities that you wanna invest in. Make sure you stay to the end of the video because I'll be sharing a way to invest in real estate with your registered accounts that most people don't even know exist. Before we get into it, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And now, let's get into it. So let's get the facts straight. We all wanna retire one day, right? And we all know that earning and saving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars for retirement can be extremely challenging. Even the Canadian government knows how difficult this is. So the government offers a variety of tax advantaged accounts. The most popular of those accounts is an RSP or Registered Retirement Savings Plan. When you invest using an RSP account, the tax on the income earned from those investments is deferred until the funds are withdrawn. I'll say that again, it's tax deferred, not tax free. Many people believe that if you put money into your RSPs, there are two advantages. It will reduce your taxable income for the year you contribute and this money is growing in an investment account tax-free. The first part of that is true. The second part is false. The logic behind an RRSP is that presumably you'll withdraw these funds during your retirement. And at that point, you'll probably be in a much lower tax bracket compared to your earning years. So you'll pay less tax on that money because you're withdrawing it later in life. Think about that for a second. The government basically wants you to work all these years to earn less money in retirement so you can pay less tax on the money in your RSP. I don't know about you, but my goal is to be earning more in retirement than I am now. And therefore the idea of putting money away into my RSP is not enticing at all. But some of you have funds already in a registered account and wanna get that money earning a higher rate of return. That I understand and I'm fully behind. The second tax advantage account is the tax-free savings account or a TFSA. If you place your investments in a TFSA, you can withdraw your investments anytime for any reason and the gains will be completely tax-free. There are limits to what you can contribute to your RSP. So if you're looking to learn more about that, check out this video right here. Because your TFSA is able to earn money tax-free, I suggest putting your highest return investments in your TFSA account. For myself and many others, real estate investing has garnered incredible returns over the years. So it's very important that you know exactly how you can use your RSP or TFSA in these high yield investments. So let's talk about some specifics on how you can use your registered funds to invest in real estate. The first way to invest in real estate with your registered accounts is buying real estate investment trusts also known as REITs. A REIT is a company that owns, operates, or finances income generating real estate. They pool money from numerous investors to buy property or lend as mortgages. Then the rental income or mortgage payments collected are paid out to investors as dividends. You can purchase REIT units in the same way you would buy any other stock. First, you'll need to register with a brokerage such as Quest Trade, Wealth Simple, or BMO Investor Line and make sure you open a RSP or TFSA investing account. Then you'll need to fund that account with the money you want to invest in REITs. Then you purchase the REITs and start collecting your tax deferred or tax free dividends. You can reinvest the dividends within your registered account to ensure that your money remains tax advantaged. If you don't want to pick and choose your REITs, you can also invest in a whole basket of REITs by purchasing REIT ETFs. Since REITs are publicly traded like stocks, they are highly liquid and the best part is you don't need a lot of money to start investing in REITs. Say you have a thousand dollars to invest. You probably can't go out and buy a home, but you can buy a REIT, which is investing in the real estate market. 
The second way you can invest in real estate using your RSP or TFSA is buying stocks in real estate companies. What I mean by that is if you invest in companies that are heavily involved in real estate, such as developers, property owners, or property managers, it will expose you to the real estate market inside of your registered funds. For example, Brookfield Property Partners is a global real estate company that owns, operates, and develops a wide variety of real estate assets office, retail, multifamily, industrial, hospitality, student housing, and much more. It is also a publicly traded company listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange with the ticker BPY.UN. As you can imagine, the process to invest in stocks of Brookfield Property Partners or other publicly traded companies that are heavily involved in real estate using your registered accounts is almost identical to that of buying REITs. All you need to do is register with a brokerage, open an RSP or TFSA account, fund your account, do your research on which companies you want to invest in, and then finally buy your stocks. Over time, these stocks, like real estate, appreciate in value and may pay dividends. If you've invested in these stocks using an RSP account, you won't need to pay tax on these returns until you withdraw those funds. And if you've used a TFSA account, Instead, the returns will be completely tax-free. The third and one of my favorite ways to invest in real estate with your RSPs or TFSAs is becoming a private lender. In this case, you act like a bank lending your money to other people so that they can purchase or potentially improve a property. In return, you earn interest on a loan that is secured by that actual real estate. There are a few different ways to do this and some are easier than others. One way is to fund an arm's length mortgage. With this type of loan, you find an individual who wants to borrow funds, but has not been able to secure a loan from more traditional lenders such as one of the big banks. You can often find these kinds of borrowers in real estate investment meetings where like-minded investors congregate and are likely looking for a loan. Another great way to find borrowers is networking with people you already know, such as your mortgage brokers and real estate lawyers. In order to lend your RSP or TFSA funds to your borrower, you need to go through a few steps. The first is to open a self-directed RSP or TFSA account with a trustee. There are only a few trustees that you can use in Canada, such as Olympia Trust or Community Trust. The big six banks do not offer self-directed RSPs or TFSAs that you can invest in real estate. And this speaks to my point earlier. If you go into your local financial institution and ask them if you can do self-directed RSPs or TFSAs and invest in real estate, they're going to tell you that you can't. But what they should say is you can't do it with us and you can do it with these other financial institutions such as Olympia Trust or Community Trust but that's probably not gonna happen. And this is why most Canadians are not even aware that they can use their registered funds or their TFSA to invest in real estate. Now, in terms of which trustee you choose, it's really up to you and potentially your lender and who they're used to working with. So do your research on Olympia Trust or Community Trust or any other trustee company before you decide which one you wanna go with. It's very important to note that you're not investing into the trustees themselves. They simply facilitate the loan between you and the borrower. Think of a trustee in the same way you think of a stock brokerage. When you fund your brokerage account, you're not investing in the brokerage. They're simply facilitating your stock purchases and sales. Once your account with the trustee is open, you can fund your account by depositing money into it. You can transfer your pre-existing RSP or TFSA funds into your newly created account from your other financial institutions. I want to make sure you heard that. This is not collapsing your RSP or TFSA, which would result in taxation. You're simply taking your registered funds and transferring them to another registered account. Therefore, there are no withholding taxes. Now that your account is set up, you need to do your due diligence on the borrower and vet the deal. This is a process in itself and a topic that I cover in depth in this video right here. Once you've decided to go through with the mortgage, you and the borrower need to submit a number of forms to the trustee. You can find a detailed list on their website, but for community trust, you need to submit six different forms and the borrower needs to submit two. The trust institutions will help you through this process or if you're working with a mortgage broker or a real estate lawyer, they should help you with this process as well. Once the trustee receives the forms and determines that they are in good order, they disperse the funds from your account to the borrower's account. When the borrower begins paying off the loan, that money will be deposited back into your account. Typically, the interest on the loan you're providing can range anywhere between 8 and 18% on an annual basis, which you earn tax-deferred or tax-free using your registered accounts. And you can very quickly see why most people, when they learn about these kinds of strategies, 
are using their RSPs or their TFSAs to invest in real estate. Another type of mortgage you can fund are syndicated mortgages. With syndicated mortgages, you pool your money together with other investors to provide the money for the mortgage. Again, this can all be done using an RSP or TFSA account with a trustee and the process is nearly identical to that of doing an individual mortgage versus doing a group mortgage. The last and potentially the easiest way to get involved with private lending using your registered funds is purchasing shares of a mortgage investment corporation or a MIC. MICs are organizations that provide mortgages to people who weren't able to get their mortgage from a traditional bank. This could be for a construction project or various other alternative lending situations. Think of MICs as a step up from a syndicated mortgage in the amount of people that are gonna be involved in that transaction. So we can lend our registered funds on an individual basis, through a syndicated mortgage or with a large group such as a MIC. You can purchase shares in these companies through most stock brokerages if it's a publicly traded MIC and you'll be paid dividends as the borrowers repay their loans to the MIC with interest. An example of a publicly traded MIC is Atrium with the ticker AI.TO. On average, Atrium has returned around 7% annually over the last few years. There are also private MICs as well. And again, the best place to be introduced to those kinds of situations are through investing networks and also through your mortgage broker or your real estate lawyer. So I wanna know, do you have real estate investments in your RSP or your TFSA accounts? Let me know in the comments section below by saying for sure or not quite yet. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.